For our second video in chapter 17, here talking about electrochemistry, we're going to continue a discussion of reduction potentials, which were introduced in the first video. And this video, while it won't be the longest, contains most of the key ideas from chapter 17, specifically the calculations that are involved in this chapter. And the whole goal in thinking about these reduction potentials is to answer that question at the top of slide 22 here. Why do some cells spontaneously flow, meaning electricity could be harnessed, right? Electrons are flowing while others don't. And that question's answered by looking at electrical potentials and standard reduction potentials, what 17.3 is all about. And all of our reduction potentials are based on the standard hydrogen electrode, or the SHE, capital S-H-E, standard hydrogen electrode, okay, which looks at two protons in an aqueous solution at a one molar concentration, coming together with two electrons to form H2 gas at a pressure of one atmosphere. Under those exact conditions, we assign that reduction potential to be equal to zero volts, because then we have a reference. Okay? We can compare all other cells and reduction potentials to that reaction so that other reactions can get a relative reduction potential. Do the same thing with electronegativity. They're all relative values. Okay? And notice the not that's over here after E. That's telling us we're at standard state conditions. Okay? Pressure of one atmosphere, concentration of one molar. Okay? We'll answer the question, what about when we're not? under standard conditions at the end of the video. But now that we have the standard hydrogen electrode, right, we can use that to determine other standard reduction potentials for different metals. Okay? This is what the hydrogen electrode looks like. Okay? It's not a metal itself. So again, we have platinum serving as an inert electrode here. And I've got protons coming together with electrons. Okay? And we're producing H2 gas. Right? That's what's going on in the she. So if I set up a galvanic cell and one of those two sides is the standard hydrogen electrode, right, then the potential that I'm reading up here on my voltmeter is obviously not zero. You can see there it's 0.337. That value can then be attributed to the other cell. So that's how we use the hydrogen electrode there on the left to figure out reduction potentials for other metals. What does that math look like, right? That value of 0.337 here rounded to positive 0 0.34 can be attributed to copper. We see the cell notation up top here, right? Platinum inert electrode, hydrogen being oxidized, copper being reduced. Put the two reactions all together. This is what we see overall, okay? Keeping in mind, this is what we're looking at largely in chapter 17, those cell notations. And the calculation, Right, to get these reduction potentials is simple. And this is a formula you're certainly going to want to have written down. Right? E of the cell, right, the potential of the cell overall, is equal to E at the cathode minus E at the anode. Okay? So if we put that cell together in its reading plus 0 0.34, right, rounding that 0.337 from before, right, cathode was copper minus the anode, which is 0. So now I know plus 0 0.34 is equal to the cathode value minus zero. So the reduction potential E cathode must be equal to 0.34. That's the math explained, right? But you just set it up. One side is the standard hydrogen electrode. Whatever the voltmeter is reading is equal to the reduction potential on the other side. Okay. And that's effectively what this slide is saying, right? We can determine the cell potential for any cell using that same exact manner. Keep in mind the calculation E of the cell is always equal to E cathode minus E anode. Right? You'll definitely need to know how to do calculations with those reduction potentials. Here's an example of some what some reduction potentials look like. Okay, I see reduction of fluorine up top here, right? Redux, reduction of manganese down on the bottom all with their corresponding values. Okay. 
that's information that will always be provided to you unless you're given E cell and asked to calculate one of them. You would never have to memorize those values, right? Just work with them in calculations. So let's see what one of those calculations looks like. Okay. This question asks, what is the cell potential? So we're calculating E cell. So we're going to be using E cell equals E cathode minus E anode consisting of a gold three and nickel two half cell. Okay, so gold three and gold metal, nickel two and nickel metal. The first question we have to ask, right, and it's kind of alluded to there, identify the oxidizing and reducing agents, right, is how do we figure out which one's being oxidized and which one's being reduced? And really, it's just going to be the process of elimination because notice these are both shown as reductions. So these aren't the numbers that I'm going to use right off the bat. I have to consider one of them is going to stay a reduction and therefore be the cathode. The other one is going to have to flip when it's serving as an oxidation happening at the anode because I can't have two things being reduced to have a spontaneous cell. Right? So do I, I think to myself, right? it's got to be cathode minus anode. So what's going to give me a positive E cell? Because a positive E cell means that my reaction is spontaneous and that electrons are flowing. So my options are 1.498 minus a negative 0 0.0257. Okay, so that's definitely going to give me a value because keep in mind, minus a negative, that becomes a positive. Or if this stays as the reduction, E cathode would be negative 0 0.257 minus 1.498. Well, that's going even further negative. So that tells me right? This one is going to flip around, right? This is going to be the anode down here. So nickel anode, gold cathode. Then it's E cell is equal to E cathode minus E anode. Uh, try that calculation on your own. You should get a value of positive 1.755 volts. Yeah. And again, it's just process of elimination. If we're trying to do a galvanic cell, it has to be spontaneous. So if you flipped those two around by accident and you got a negative number, then flip them. That should always end up with a positive number for a galvanic cell. One other thing to pay attention to, right? Notice that that's not balanced. Three electrons here, two electrons there, and that's okay. I don't have to balance those by multiplying this one by two and this one by three to get that lowest common multiple, like when I'm balancing a redox. For these standard reduction potential calculations, you just use the E values that are given to you. You don't have to multiply them by anything. It's a simple calculation, cathode minus anode. And that wraps up 17.3. Again, try that one on your own. Should get an answer of positive 1.755 volts. That brings us to 17.4, the Nernst equation. And this is where we see chapter 16 and chapter 17 come together, electrochemistry and thermodynamics, and even gonna tie in some chapter 13 equilibrium. And that's all about the fact that we know that electrical energy can do work, right? We can harness electricity to do work. Any electrical appliance you have in your house is doing exactly that. And electrical work is measured by taking volts, right? Our cell potential times the charge in coulombs, which is equal to joules. The charge on one mole of electrons is equal to something that's known as Faraday's constant, represented by a capital F. Okay. And the value of Faraday's constant is right over here. 9.648 times 10 to the fourth joules per volt mole. And we will use that in some calculations here shortly. Okay, so make sure you've got that number jotted down. Faraday's constant F this value over here. Okay. We're also going to think, be thinking about N in this chapter. N is the number of moles of electrons. If you're jotting down notes, I'd underline that, moles of electrons in the balanced redox reaction. Okay, so now in 17.4, I do need to think about a re reaction being balanced where I didn't necessarily need to in 17.3. Right. So 17 four in your textbook gives you some derivations of equations. You don't have to know how these equations are derived, but you do have to know these 
three equations from section 17.4, which relate thermodynamics, Gibbs free energy, to cell potential. They relate Gibbs free energy thermodynamics to equilibrium. Okay, we saw this one in chapter 16. And then we can relate right, cell potential to an equilibrium constant as well. And now we can see that Gibbs free energy, the equilibrium constant, and cell potential can all be related. Three things for a reaction to be spontaneous, right? A negative delta G, a positive E cell, and a large positive value of K. And make sure you've got all these jotted down. Here's Faraday's constant we saw on the previous slide, right? That N value that was also on the previous slide we see in two places as well. Figure 17.9 from the text has a nice summation of all these equations. What are you trying to relate and what equation do you use? You should be comfortable using any of those three equations. And we can put them into practice here on slide 34. I've, this question asks us, what's the standard free energy change? Yeah, so that's delta G and the equilibrium constant, so K, for the reaction at room temperature. Is it spontaneous? Yeah, so what do we do? Okay. Well, the only thing I'm given here is the E values okay, for the tin half cell and the copper half cell. So the first step is to calculate E cell. After you have E cell, you can then use equations we saw before to calculate delta G and to calculate K. Okay. So you should pause this now, right? I'm not going to upload a video to show how to solve this. We can go over it in review session if you'd like to attend. Right? But you should figure out how to calculate all three of these things for this practice. E cell, delta G, and K. Okay, so pause the video and try that. Now that you've resumed okay, the values that you should have gotten, you'll need to use N, the number of moles of electrons in this equation, which is two in this situation. Okay, your answer for E cell should have been positive 0 0.291. Your delta G should have been negative 56.2 kilojoules per mole. Might have gotten a different answer if you were working in joules. Right? Just multiply that by a thousand if so. And your K value should have come out to be 6.8 times 10 to the ninth. Any one of those three will tell you that the reaction's spontaneous. And you should always get that. If your E cell is positive, your delta G should always be negative and your K should always be positive. So that brings us to one last equation for 17.4, as I alluded to before, right? What if we're under non-standard conditions? And in that situation, we use what's known as the Nernst equation. Okay? If we're at standard temperature, okay, 25 Celsius or 298 Kelvin, we can use the Nernst equation down here, right? Shown in two forms. I'm in favor of the log form down here on the bottom. This is the one I'd like you to know to calculate if we're under non-standard conditions. Because remember, everything we said before, the E naughts was assuming one atmosphere of pressure, one molar concentrations. If we're anything else, we're in non-standard states. Notice the naught has gone away. And to calculate that, it's equal to E naught of the cell, which would be provided minus 0 0.0592 over N. N is, again, your moles of electrons. This V is not a variable, it's just volts multiplied by log of your Q value. Okay, so you have to calculate Q for whatever conditions you're at, but once you have Q, now you can calculate E cell. Okay. And this 0 0.0592 volts is what happens when R, T, and F are all combined together. Okay, so the Nernst equation, know that one from the bottom, you'll use that on your sapling as well. Plus all the earlier equations, there are five of them total from this chapter. Make sure you're comfortable with using all of them. Okay? And then in the last video, right, we'll talk about where things have a negative self potential and therefore are non-spontaneous.